Let's move on to changing the architecture and see whether we can use CNNs to do sequential recommendation type of system or sequential type of recommendations. And the name is going to be uh, CASER. It's Convolutional Sequence Embedding Recommendation Model. What do we have? We have a set of users. This is the number of users in that set, user one, user two, etc. You have the universe of the items that you are trying to recommend to a particular user. And the user is going to be interacting with your website. Each one of these is that at time one, the user clicked on or interacted with, with uh, this particular item, perhaps the 10th item in your list or the 121th item in your list. So you can think of this as a sequence of integers. So this is session-based. Don't worry about this figure yet. I'm going to start by panel B, then explain panel A, and then your last function. Don't worry about this figure also. I'm going to come back to it as we go through the math. What do we have? What is the input? You have L successive items in this list or in this sequence of interactions in one session. In this case, one, two, three. L is going to be three. In this case, L is going to be four. And the task is given the past, predict the future, predict the next T items. What is the user going to click next? and the one after the next item, in the case that T is two. Given the past, predict the future, and that's your task. And then you're gonna have a sliding window because then you need to move to the next step, slide this window one step further in your sequence, and then predict the next T items. So the size of the sliding window is gonna be L plus T, in this case, four plus two. What information do you have? You have U, you know your user ID, you know the previous items that this user was clicking on, these are the previous L items, and then you're predicting the next two items or next T items. This is your training data. This is how your training data is going to look like. And this is your user, that's the sequence, L plus D is going to give you the window. So I just explained this portion of the figure. Because you're dealing with integers, you're going to have embedding matrices that you're going to uh, used to do your lookup. These are similar to dictionary lookups when it comes to language. For each item, you have the corresponding vector, and these are hyperparameters that you choose. It's the dimension of your embeddings. And then you're going to end up with an embedding matrix. At this stage in the sequence, it was a sequence of integers, perhaps 3, 5, uh, 1, 7, etc. As you go and look up in the dictionary or in your embedding matrix, each one of these integers are going to end up being a vector. And in the end, you're going to end up with a matrix, which is going to be L dimensional, as that's the size of your window. And these are hyperparameters that you choose. It's the other size. For your user, these are also integers. These are user IDs. And you can have D dimensional vectors associated, for, associated to each user. The idea is if you want to use CNNs, what is going to be the image? The image is going to be this embedding matrix. So it's going to be this matrix here. We're going to treat that as an image. Now the question is, what is pixel? Is this dimension pixel or the other dimension counting pixels? And depending on how you interpret pixels, you're going to define your convolutions. And that is why you have two routes here. And that's going to define your filters. For horizontal convolutional layer, which is this step here, uh, you are interpreting this dimension, the first dimension as the pixel dimension. We cannot process all of the pixels at the same time. You're going to have a smaller filter size. So H is going to be less than L. And then you're going to take that filter and shift it over your embedding and multiply uh, pointwise and then add things together. And in the end, uh, you have perhaps more filters than one, as you can have N of those. So H is going to have is going to be less than L, and then you're sliding this filter over your image, over the embedding. And the question is, what H are you going to use? You're going to use all of them. And this is what I just explained. You pick perhaps if H is two, and you're at the ith location, you're going to take these two, multiply it by the corresponding uh, filter, add things up, 
and then that's going to give you the output and then you push it through some nonlinearity. This is how convolutions work. Then uh, per each filter, this is K, per each filter, you are going to end up with L minus one, L minus H plus one, because you need to take into account that if you're processing windows of two by two, you're sliding perhaps by one, then this is one, two, three, four, this has four pixels, and the number of pixels is gonna drop by one. This is one, two, and three, depending on H and your stride. But in the end of the day, you have K uh, filters. Each one of these are vectors. We don't like to work with matrices. In the end of the day, you want to work with vectors. Therefore, you do your max pulling operation for each filter. This is the K filter giving you one of these entries. You have perhaps four filters that's going to give you the output vector, which is four dimensional. So this is the filter. This is the image. This dimension is the pixel. You multiply, add together. That's going to give you a D dimensional vector here. You do max pooling. That's going to give you one of these red circles. And then you do that K times. K, you can control it, or N times. In this case, N was four for that figure. If you interpret this other dimension as your pixel dimension and the other one as the number of channels, then you need to redefine what is your filter. In this case, the, uh, the filter size is the entire number of channels and uh, one here. So you're going to be shifting the same thing over and over again by one and multiplying. And in the end, because the stride is one, the size of your filter is one, you're going to end up with a lot of vectors. This is just to avoid uh, those pooling operations. This is directly going to give you a vector. This is vertical convolution. What is happening here? This is happening at the point level. This is happening at the union level. Horizontal convolution. Now you're here. You have the embedding from user that you just copy and paste. There is going to be some layer here, perhaps a linear layer. And in the end, you concatenate this vector. On top of that, you do MLP perhaps a simple linear layer or perhaps a couple of linear layers on top of each other with non-linearities in between. You push that through a sigmoid and then that's going to give you the probability of the next item. So we went through a lot of trouble just to model the probability. As soon as you have the probability, you can do maximum likelihood estimation. And then uh, you're going to write down your likelihood over your users and uh, the collection of time steps for which you want to do prediction. So this was next item prediction, or you can do the next two item predictions. CU is counting the next two items for the next three items. This product here is for the next two items or three items. That's gonna give you your likelihood to maximize. But sometimes a user is gonna interact with your website. Suddenly they're gonna go and explore some random items on your website, and then they're gonna come back. To capture that type of skip behavior, rather than predicting the next item or a window of next items, you're going to shift the window of the prediction. You're going to skip a couple of iterations. And this is also something that you can control, where you can work with all of them. Not only predict the next item, predict the next window of two items, or they skip a couple of iterations and then do mm -hmm. prediction. And to model that, you have something else here. This is predict the next window, predict a window shifted by one, predict a window shifted by two, et cetera. And then you can do write down your uh, loss function, which is the negative of the log of your probability. In terms of evaluation metrics, you can look at precision, recall, or average precision. In the end of the day, you're recommending a list of N items to the user. That is our hat here and our uh, you can think of it as the last 20 actions or the last 20 items that the user clicked on. And all you are doing is looking at the intersection, but precision is dividing by the total number of recommendations that you made. Recall is out of the ground truth items, which ones are the correct ones. So you're dividing by R. And you can look at average precision. Any questions about uh, convolutional sequence embedding? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.